Let's work through a quick example of calculating the standard cell voltage for a galvanic cell given the standard reduction potentials for its cathode and anode. This will illustrate some of the peculiarities of working with reduction potentials. So let's consider actually the cell we've been working with, which involves aluminum 3 plus, aluminum metal, copper, and copper 2 plus. The balanced chemical equation in the direction in which this reaction is spontaneous is written here, and although we won't go through the calculation in this video, we could figure out that this is the spontaneous direction by calculating, for example, the standard molar free energy change associated with this reaction and seeing that it's less than zero. We can separate out the reduction and oxidation processes by examining what's happening to copper and aluminum separately and using electrons as reactants and products, as we've seen before. And when we do that, we get this result. Three copper two plus ions are reduced by six electrons to form three copper metal atoms, and two aluminum metal atoms are oxidized to form two aluminum three plus cations and six electrons. So the numbers of electrons balance as they always will when we separate out the reduction and oxidation processes like this. Now let's ask what's the standard reduction potential, E circle reduction, for each half reaction here. We can look up these values. For the reduction of copper 2 plus by two electrons, we find that the standard reduction potential is positive 0.34 volts. In other words, reduction is spontaneous with respect to the standard hydrogen electrode. For the reduction of aluminum 3 plus to form aluminum atoms, which is this reaction in reverse, we find that the reduction potential is negative 1.66 volts. And now, since the overall reaction is the sum of these two, let's call them A and B, then we can add up the potentials for processes A and B to get the final result. Notice, however, that in the bottom case, the potential we've written is for the reduction of Al3+, which is the reverse of what's actually happening here. The actual potential for this process, for process B as it's written in this direction, is the negative of the reduction potential since we're seeing an oxidation here. So this potential is actually plus 1.66 volts. That's the origin in the formula of this negative sign. Now that we've written it this way though, we can simply add these two together and find that the overall cell voltage here is equal to 0.34 volts. That's the potential happening at the cathode, which is here on the right-hand side of the drawing, plus or minus a negative, if you like, 1.66 volts. That's the potential for the opposite of reduction, oxidation, happening at the anode here on the left. Something that may concern you here is that A and B are not exactly the processes that you would see in a standard reduction potential table. In particular, in the copper case, that standard reaction is multiplied by three. Note the stoichiometric coefficients. And for the aluminum case, the standard reaction is multiplied by two and reversed, of course. This begs the question, do we need to respect stoichiometry here and multiply, for example, the potential of A by three and the potential of B by two before we add the two together? Well, in fact, we don't, and a good test of this is to simply measure the actual potential, and we would actually see that it is, in fact, 2.00 volts, the sum of the two without scaling. When we're adding cell voltages, we do not respect stoichiometry. This is the one place where we don't. And the reason why has to do with the fact that E cell, if we remember back to our relation between E cell and delta G, is equal to negative delta G, and I'll just use standard conditions, divided by NF, where N is the number of electrons transferred. So if we double, for example, a redox reaction, we multiply the delta G times two. Delta G is extensive. However, we also multiply the number of electrons transferred by two, right? These two cancel. And so even upon doubling the reaction, the associated E cell value is still the same. That's why we don't scale and don't need to respect stoichiometry when applying this process. The reduction potential values are not scaled because this ratio is independent of whatever scaling factor we might use. 